What's up guys, Jeff Cavalier, AthleanX.com. You didn't fall for that title, did you? If you did, it's okay. You don't want to go anywhere though, you want to make sure you watch this video because I'm going to show you today the ways that research can be twisted to not always mean what it's supposed to mean. You know here at AthleanX we like to put the science back in strength. Well sometimes science can be bad science. So I'm going to show you a few different ways that you can spot bad science right away. Right off the bat, if your research that you're relying on says any one of these three things, then you need to make sure you run the other direction fast. Firstly, if scientists discover the secret to something, you can pretty much ignore this because scientists aren't discovering secret anything. It doesn't matter where they're from, China, Norway, Cambridge, probably not real scientists. And whatever they discover the secret to, again, there's no secrets guys. We all know that by now, that's why you're watching this channel. Secondly. If they discover one simple trick to something, there's not real research. We don't look for simple tricks, we look for real hard work that produces results from our hard work. That's the way it works guys, it's the way it's worked for years and years and years and that's the way it's always going to work. There's no such thing as simple tricks. Thirdly, if the scientists that you're relying on have discovered a revolutionary new breakthrough, I can tell you that revolutionary things stopped happening in the late 1700s. If anything revolutionary and new comes to, to pass here, you're going to hear about it on your news at night, all night long, not on some hidden website somewhere on the internet. So let's get these three right off the bat, and then we can start talking about real science and where we can start poking some holes when necessary in those studies. All right, the first thing we need to look at when we're looking at our studies in the publications and journals is who's conducting the studies in the first place. Because we know that one of the biggest settings for research is the university setting. But if you think that the only guys conducting the research are the professors and the guys who've been at the university for 20, 30, and 40 years, the real scientists who wear the white lab coats, you're mistaken. A lot of the research being conducted today and being published in journals is being done by the students themselves. Now is that a bad thing? No, it's a great thing for getting more and more men and women into the field of research and developing them throughout their careers. However, not every single person, and you guys know this as a fact, not every single person who's conducting research in college is looking at having that as a profession beyond college. So what are you left with? You're left with a lot of students looking for good grades. And if the, the research that they're conducting winds up being ambiguous at the end of two, three, or four months with no real definitive answer, or if they got a really nice trend going, and a few two, three, or four outliers come in that really screw up this, their data, guess what happens to those two, three, or four outliers? They become non-existent because they just get erased and thrown away. If it's going to screw up good data, it could screw up their entire uh, research in the first place, and that might not be good for their chances of getting their article published. So always make sure that you're remembering that, guys. It's not always the real scientists who are doing the work. It's a, it's a lot of times young guys and girls who are doing this for a good grade. The next bridge you want to cross before you start believing what you're reading is you've got to know who's funding the study that you're reading. If a third party or a private investor is behind the study that you're reading, you better make sure that you know what maybe their bias would be and what benefits they would have depending upon the outcome itself. And here's where we see a lot of issues. People will write to me, someone said, Jeff, why is it that in your RX2 and 3 protein supplements that you don't have enzymes? Because enzymes included in protein supplements have been proven, this is a perfect example, proven to increase the absorption rate of protein and therefore synthesis of new muscle by 267% or some odd number. Well, it just so happens that the study that they included was the only study that they included and the only study that could be found and it was funded by the exact company who was making a protein powder that had protein enzymes in it. The only one. So it's in their best interest to make sure that everyone knows how important protein enzymes are and enzymes are to the digestion of protein so we all run and buy their supplement. Again, is it a good thing or a bad thing? We don't know but it certainly raises our eyebrows as well as other studies where I've had people comment on our videos and say, Jeff, you, it's been proven that you can take that. This is how people talk when they get behind research because it is a really, uh, uh, it's, it's, a, it's a passionate thing. It's been proven that 600 milligrams of caffeine is perfectly safe and perfectly normal and not going to cause any problems because we tend to be a bit more conservative there. Well, the person in the study that they again cited and sent to me was funded by 
I, I don't remember the exact organization, but it basically was like the pro the the, uh, the the caffeine lovers of America Association number one, and number two, one of the lead researchers on the topic on the on the the study was the son of one of the chief financial officers at Nestle. So if you think he's going to say anything bad about caffeine when his inheritance is on the line, guys, you got to start looking a little bit deeper into these studies before you start believing them. The second part of the equation here is funding is going to be in the government funding. And the government's going to fund in the, in the way of grants. And I can tell you this, guys, again, having spent a long time in the university setting, grants are the lifeblood of the university and the research being done. They basically allot a certain amount of money to a university to conduct the research for them that then comes back. And there's a lot of different uh, parameters in place to try to make sure that what's being discussed and what's actually being portrayed and displayed to the public is accurate. But there's, there's grant fraud happening all the time, guys. Professors will apply for these funds and sometimes not even use them all for the research itself. Sometimes that same professor is driving around in a Maserati and everyone wants to know what happened to the study. Or even worse, when we realize that future grant funding is relying on the current research delivering the results that hopefully the governments are looking for, well then we know sometimes that even there the professor themselves might have a little bit of a bias as to how the things turn out because if they want to continue to receive this grant money and funding, they got to make sure that the results that they're, uh, that they're producing are of interest to the government who's funding these projects. So what are we supposed to do? We know that there's some challenges here in determining whether it's good research or bad research. We know right off the bat that initial sniff test of whether or not there's scientists somewhere providing breakthroughs, those guys can be ignored, but the, the rest of the stuff, I know a lot of you probably don't even care about it at all. All you care about is working out training and that's great. But I will tell you that when you do it and you apply science and put it back in strength like we say, you can see fast results, you can see better results, and it's because you're avoiding a lot of the failures that the research has shown ahead of time so that you don't have to discover them and go through them yourself. That, guys, is what we do, and that's what AthleanX is all about. If you're looking for a research-backed, science-based program, I've been in school for a long period of time, and hopefully those seven years were allowing me to be able to allow you guys to benefit from some of the mistakes I made along the way, but also to rely on some of the science-backed research that does help you to produce better, faster results by training in a very specific way. Again, we do that in the AthleanX training program. You can get that at AthleanX.com. For you guys that really don't care about the research at all, at least this might open your eyes to some of the things that you might want to glance at. If anyone does throw a research study in your face to try to prove you wrong, I know a lot of guys are trying to do it these days. Bro science is rampant. Real science will reign. you got to make sure that when you can look at that, that study and poke holes in it if necessary, that's a, great way to, that's a great way to feel strong and confident in your decisions to do what you do. And hopefully this video will give you at least a couple of places you're going to want to look. All right, guys. Hopefully you found this video helpful. In the meantime, leave me a comment and thumbs up below. Whatever else that you'd like to see, I'll make sure I bring it to you as always.